The format right now is really, really new. We've only had a couple of weeks with the new ban list and only one weekend with Ignition Assault. But in today's video, I wanna talk about one of the cooler tech options that I saw at the Pro Play Tour event held a couple weeks ago. Now this event did not have Ignition Assault legal, which is worth mentioning, but it was under the new ban list. I've already talked at length about how cool the Luna Light deck was that made top 16 of that event using Magician Souls, which has now basically become a staple for other Luna Light players. But today's video is also inspired by one of his choices, a choice out of the side deck. The card we're focusing on in today's video is Anti-Magic Arrows, and this card is super interesting to me because while it is a very good option against back row decks, it doesn't actually remove any back row, it just locks them down for the rest of the turn. I want to talk about this card because while it is a very good card, it's not perfect for every single deck out there. It does have some pretty big downsides. However, if you can find a deck for this card to work in, you'll catch a lot of people off guard and probably win some pretty easy games. As always, if you guys like to purchase any of the cards that I talk about in today's video, especially Anti-Magic Arrows, the main focus of the discussion, please use my link in the description below to tcgplayer.com. A portion of all the sales that happen after clicking that link will go right back into this channel, so it's a great way to support me without spending any extra money. Anti-Magic Arrows is a quick play spell card that says, at the start of the battle phase for the rest of this turn, after this card resolves, spell slash trap cards and their effects can cannot be activated. Cards and effects cannot be activated in response to this card's activation. So what does all that mean? Well, it means as turn player, at least, you can use this at the very beginning of your battle phase, which is really good because when you're turn player, you get player priority to do the first action when a phase starts. That means that once you declare your entering battle phase, and as long as your opponent says that's okay, if you're in the battle phase, you get the first chance to use anti-magic arrows. This is super helpful, of course, because cards and effects cannot be activated in response to this card's activation. If you like started your turn, for example, and declared battle phase, your opponent might think if you're going second that you might be dropping an evenly matched. However, they probably won't be prepared for anti-magic arrows, allowing you to get a pretty easy game. Once resolved, neither player can activate spell slash trap cards or their effects for the rest of the turn. That is perhaps the biggest challenge of this card is that it is really good for locking down all of your opponent's back row options, but you also have to not rely on spell or trap cards yourself. That means we we probably won't be seeing this card in decks like Spiral because they heavily rely on their spell cards, but as I mentioned earlier, this card didn't top in a Spiral deck, it topped in a Luna Light list. And while Luna Lights do have a lot of really important and powerful spells and traps that they want to use, this card opens up the opportunity to just blow the opponent out of the game. The basic idea is that you summon two level 4 monsters in main phase 1, possibly using, most likely using, a spell or two, and then you declare that you're entering the battle phase and most back row players, if they're playing the decks correctly, will save all of their interruptions, their negations, for when your opponent consolidates cards into Xyz monsters or into Link monsters. So if you just have a couple level 4 monsters on the field, they probably won't think anything of it. Once your opponent agrees to the phase change, you have player priority to do something first, as long as it's your turn, which it probably will be, and in that case, you immediately use the anti-magic arrows. Now, they're completely shut out of all of their back row, as are you, but you you can make in main phase 2 Evil Swarm Exiton Knight to blow up their entire board. Also keep in mind that one of the reasons this works so well is that just like super polymerization, anti-magic arrows cannot be responded to which means your opponent can't use like Solemn Judgment to stop its ability. However this card does have some problems. The biggest issue is that this thing doesn't actually get rid of any of the back row. And while that might be fine if you can make an Evil Swarm Exiton Knight, if you can't make one of those or if your opponent stops your play before you can actually summon two level level 4 monster as well, this card basically does nothing and that is a huge issue. Now not every single player is going to know this card exists and not every single player is going to play around it, but if you are playing Luna Lights and your opponent knows about this card, they might be a little bit more cautious. If you just summon 2 level 4 monsters and then declare battle phase, your opponent might bounce one of the monsters back to your hand and now you're in a tough spot. This card is also particularly bad against Floodgates because while it prevents spells and traps and their effects from being activated, it doesn't actually negate any spells or traps that are already facing up on the field. For example, if there's like a skill drain on your opponent's side of the field and you have anti-magic arrows, well you might be asking for twin twisters instead because now you can't really do anything even if you have this card. Because this card doesn't actually destroy anything, it's also significantly worse going first than cards like twin twisters or heavy storm duster because when you go first against back row decks, you want to be destroying their back row in the end phase, which this card doesn't actually do. It's obviously really effective going second, but you don't have infinite side deck space. If you only have 
have room for three cards, you might want to play a card a little bit more versatile than Anti-Magic Arrows. The other big issue here is that while this card does lock down back row, or I guess all spells and traps, for the entire turn, if you don't have a way to actually get rid of those cards, they're still going to be there around the next turn. That is really, really bad. It's one of the things that made Red Reboot kind of risky in some cases. Every single time you use Red Reboot, you want to be OTKing your opponent so that they couldn't use the free trap card that you gave them. Anti-Magic Arrows is a little bit worse, because in the case of Red Reboot, you can push the Red Reboot through on your main phase 1, build up a big board, and hopefully OTK the opponent. With Anti-Magic Arrows though, you want to make a super, super low commitment play in main phase 1, and then hit them with this in the battle phase, so that in main phase 2 you can blow up their board and continue your combo as best as you can. You also have to be really careful if your opponent has a card like Effect Veiler, or Ash Blossom, or DD Crow, which will prevent you, maybe in some cases, from making that rank 4. Please keep in mind, you don't have to make Evil Swarm Exiton Knight for this card to be good. You could make Topologic, you could make Black Rose Dragon, it doesn't have to be this specific rank 4. It does, however, have to be a monster effect from a monster card that you can make pretty easily without using a lot of spells or traps, because you also won't be able to use those types of cards. And that is tricky for some decks, maybe not all of them, and that's why this card was played in Luna Light specifically, because that deck actually can make one of the best rank 4s with this card. I really feel like we've only barely scratched the surface of what this card is capable of though, so don't only put it in this box where it's only good in Luna Lights with Exton Knight, sort of think outside of the box as well for Black Coast Dragon and other options. I still think this card has a huge surprise factor though, and that might be really, really helpful. If everyone is citing cards like Stullet Road, or The Huge Revolution is Over, or even Dark Bribe for things like Lightning Storm and Evenly Match and Twin Twister as well, this card can kind of come out of nowhere and just win some games because they won't be prepared for it. Even though I'm making this video and you guys now know about it, I think the general population is not really aware that this card even exists. Having the surprise factor can give you a huge upper hand against a lot of your opponents at a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament, especially when it's a new format and a new set just came out. This is one of the reasons that rogue strategies can top tournaments. You know, if your opponent doesn't know what you're doing, even if your deck is less powerful than theirs, the surprise factor is a huge deal. But what a lot of people don't realize is that even if you're playing a more well-known strategy, it's really good to have sort of secret tech options for beating the other matchups. In this case, even though this player was playing Luna Lights, he had a lot of really unique cards. He had the Magician Souls, which wasn't standard. He had Anti-Magic Arrows, which wasn't standard. It's no surprise to me then that Noah was the only top 16 Luna Light player at that event, because he really pushed himself to be as creative as possible inside an already established strategy. Playing things like Magician Souls, which wasn't standard, playing things like Anti-Magic Arrows, which still isn't standard in his already established Luna Light deck, gave him the edge he needed to top that event. Right now, there are a lot of different cards you can play against back row decks. You can play Evenly Matched, or Lightning Storm, or Twin Twisters, or Red Reboot, or this card as well. There are so many options out there that deciding which one is best for you is something that you have to do by yourself, hopefully by either watching videos like this one, or deck profiles, or reading articles about these cards that maybe aren't so standard in the decks that they were played in. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's discussion video on Anti-Magic Arrows. This card is super cool, and I feel like it's super underrated. I know I'm making this video about it, but I really feel like not enough people are talking about this card. It was one of the coolest tech options that I saw from that entire tournament, so I hope more people look into it after this video. That goes double if you're playing a rank 4 based strategy that doesn't necessarily need spells or trap cards to make one rank 4 monster because that's really where, to me at least, this card seems the most effective. I'd be super interested to see a deck that could play this card alongside things like Topologic or Black Rose Dragon, but I'm not sure if those decks right now at least exist. Anyway, I think I pretty much covered everything I want to say about Anti-Magic Arrows. This card is super cool and it was a really awesome tech option to see. I hope I see more of it in the metagame. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if you guys like to purchase Anti-Magic Arrows or any other Yu-Gi-Oh cards or just cards in general, please use that link in the description below to tcgplayer.com to help me out while you're already doing your normal card game shopping. Please let me know in the comment section as well what you guys think about Anti-Magic Arrows. Is this card underrated? Is it overrated? Is it just right in the middle? Let me know how this card stacks up against other back removal. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. I'll see you later though. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.